Hello, it's Kirsten. Here we are on a rainy night. So, what am I bothering you with today? Well, I thought I'd follow up from the previous video that I did talking about practicing, of course, and focus some more on the efficiency aspect. So, just to make the most out of every single unit of time in practice, so as to make way for a full and varied and productive daily schedule which is another way of saying more time to open the fridge and fall asleep in the backyard. Anyway, I'll elaborate on an idea which is really quite simple and useful as far as efficiency is concerned. Address the bigger picture first in a general, all-encompassing way before focusing on individual details. And I'm going to mention two different topics this time related to practice where, in my experience, this could really apply. First, let's just make an analogy. Language learning. For example, I started learning French pretty early on in school here in Ottawa. You know, I'd learned with the textbook practice, all the grammar, conjugation over and over again on paper. And actually I'd do relatively well on tests even. But if somebody came up to me during this time, say after a concert and just said anything, like, as tu pensé à toutes les possibilités de marcher en carbone? C'est pas seulement pour jouer par toc, hein, mais également ça peut être utilisé comme un bâton marche, ou une canne à pêche, ou même une punition solide pour une mauvaise intonation. C'est sympa, non? Je... pas... merci. It would be as if I never even learned French. It's only when I forced myself to converse with French speakers wherever I went, no matter how inadequate the pronunciation and how many mistakes I made, that I really started to acquire the language. This is because I put myself in the overall context and atmosphere of a real-life conversation where all the individual working parts, so to say, are forced to come together. I feel that this potential discrepancy between studying a language in a classroom and actually being able to speak it could be similar to that between working technical exercises in a practice room and the actual process of performing a piece of music. So for the first topic, let's cover something as simple as warming up, especially when it comes to the subtler functions of the left hand. Let's say if I haven't played all day or if my hands are particularly stiff, my first impulse would usually be to start with basic exercises that work a very specific aspect in the left hand, whether it be finger action or shifting or vibrato control, etc. And I also tend to spend a lot of time on and almost obsess over each exercise to just assure myself that everything is working well before moving on to the next. But you see, this may not actually be the most efficient way to warm up. I find that no matter how much time I spend on a particular exercise, I'm often training only one tiny aspect of what playing and performing actually involves physically, not to mention the influence that pressure and emotional involvement has on our bodies as well. Let's say I worked finger dropping and lifting, you know, the snappy stuff. For sure, this particular aspect will be fluent, but what about this or this or this? or even this, and so on. So let's experiment. Instead of starting with individual exercises, I would first take a passage from a piece. You know, any passage I know, uh, something comfortable, but also just challenging enough, and play through it. It doesn't have to be completely up to speed. You really don't have to try too hard here. But this is really what gets the blood flowing, and all the muscles in the arms and shoulders moving faster. The only important thing here is to avoid excess tension anywhere in the setup, just to be aware of that since, of course, this is warm-up and we don't want to strain anything. There's absolutely no need to work yourself too hard at the beginning, of course. In fact, I feel like warm-up is the time in practice where you don't actually have to take yourself too seriously. Once everything feels more alive and active, then work on specific exercises. I actually find that any exercises I do at this point become more consequential. The second topic where this could be very helpful for efficiency's sake 
is when learning new pieces or even just picking up pieces I haven't played in a while. Here's another analogy. When carving a statue or a sculpture, of course, I'm not an expert at all, but I wouldn't imagine that one would focus on refining and finishing just one small area of the marble block before then moving on to another. I'd actually think that a rough outline of the entire sculpture would be established first. The same thing goes for learning pieces. I'd say it doesn't really matter if the passage work isn't fluent at first. Working through a new piece in general first allows me to cultivate and always be aware of an overall vision of the piece to get myself acquainted with the physical and mental demands of the entire piece at the earliest opportunity. This way, I'm more able to make mental notes along the way and prioritize what needs to be worked on the most. And I find that the subsequent polishing of individual passages, just like in the previous topic, becomes all the more effective. So that's that. A little something from my own experience that I thought I'd offer for today. See you next time.